Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Tuesday. This is October the 11th and we're looking at the Dow attempting earlier on the future. I had a reading in my Chapman with Trin Gage yesterday that said uh, the E-mini futures within two days should have a really strong balance. <clears throat> um, and uh, we got that balance. If I can show you here, yeah, let me go to this. Uh, there we go. If we look, this is the one minute chart. <clears throat> it made a low, the E-mini made a low earlier this morning at about uh, 6 o'clock, at about 35, let's call it 3584, 85. And then um, had a beautiful run. And remember the chapter where we are always looking for four higher peaks, the buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode, implying that the, the price that you're following should then go to at least four higher peaks. That's peak D, alphabetized A, B, C, D with uppercase on the way up. It can go higher than that, but D is where you just have to, for the moment, lift your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake to see whether or not there's a sharp pullback coming based on other technicals. Well, you went to a peak D at about 7.28 this morning. It was walking the nine-period moving average, then a pullback, sideways move. Hit the 200-period moving average as a springboard. Started another brand new ABCD with a Chapman Wave inside. Uh, this is Chapman Wave instant restart right there. Within three bars, it takes out the left side high. Then went to another peak D, and that peak D was, in fact, the high of 36. Um, I think it was around about 30. Pulled back sharply, went underneath underneath the 200-period um, exponential moving average. And also what I had drawn in was that that peak D, I did a left side, right side bar symmetry. Well, it didn't come down to that line uh, in time. It waited another four minutes, five minutes, and then it took it out, which was also the 200-period moving average support. And then it recycled to an instant restart on the way down. So it becomes trough E slash A, trough F slash B, trough G slash C, and then it went to a D, and now it's gone to a trough E. And this is the first time that on balance volume is giving you a nice a V-shaped turnaround that says that's at least an attempt to make a, a, a move to the upside, but you need to see it get to about 35.93. It's at 35.85 right now. 35.93 for the pink nine-period moving average to turn green over the 14-period moving average. And then if that happens a little later in the session, maybe towards five minutes or 10 minutes to 11 or maybe 10 past 11, uh, a.m. this morning, right now we're at 10.09 a.m., we could see a test of the 200 period moving average as resistance, which is at 3.604. All right, got that out of the way. Let's get to our story, a very important why. Because in the pattern of uh, in the Chapman Wave methodology, there's a pattern that I call the dreaded H. The only reason I call it dreaded H is if it takes out that left side low, it can go a lot lower. Well, uh, in this particular pattern, you've cut, you came down sharply right there, bounced in August. That's where we went uh, short via the DOG. Still have that as an intermediate term position, and although each day we keep trying to trade the diamonds to see whether or not there's going to be traction to the upside. Don't want to put it on too many positions alongside with stocks. They're just in a bear phase. 90% of the stocks or even more can keep coming going down. So you really need to test the waters. And at this particular point, that left side low of this, you see there was a dreaded H at that key support of the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. It failed. It was in September. Took out that left side low, and it went right through it. And now we've got another arch formation, except this time. What happens in these H patterns is that when you get to a peak A or a peak B on the bounce and it fails, when it comes down and there's an island reversal, I don't want to put too many chart patterns in here, but right there there's an island reversal, three bars up, gapped up, and then three bars gapped down below the left side low, so now you've got a gap. This is the acceleration phase. So this particular bar today, today's candle, 
either it's the first time that there's some support that comes in to try to get back to at least 26,300 level, uh, maybe on, on a balance, we'll see, still very early in the session, because on a purely technical level, the charts are saying it's extremely overbought everywhere you go. There are just... A, I'm oh, sorry, extremely oversold. Oversold means like a, like an elastic band, stretching, stretching, stretching. It's ready for a little bit of a bounce to the upside. How strong and how long the bounce is really depends on the, how the torque generates upside momentum so that it takes out resistance levels. In this case, it would be a, a move into the 30,450s that says, whew, at least we can get an H that goes to an M pattern. This lowercase h could go to an M pattern. Well, in this particular instance, you see how many times it's failed, how many times it's failed in the weekly chart from the 36,952 high back a week of the 5th of January. And this is the largest one. When it becomes large like this, it means that you've used up a lot of buying power to the upside, but you've also begun to use up a lot of selling power. So in this particular instance, this is a very important session because, as I said, you see right here, this is the candle that we're looking at, October the 11th. This little candle right here. Um, if this fails and takes out yesterday's low of 29,010 in the Dow, wow, it could be a quick move down to the 28,715 level. So this is really important so that you can start another H pattern. All right, and you see exactly the same thing in the S&P. I wanted to take a little time on technical patterns this morning. I'll do that again tomorrow because I want you to show you. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll do that tomorrow because I've got a little, uh, some technical aspect that's not quite working here with my Skype. Um, so I'm, I'm not using Skype just at the moment. We'll try again uh, during one of the breaks to see if it works because uh, there was an update, I guess, that uh, made a little problem for me. So you can see the S&P has taken out the left side low. And that implies <clears throat> that you have two sessions in which to close above that left side low of 35,084.13 to at least try to save the day. And then it's going to have a bounce, and that bounce should take you to at least maybe a moving average, in this case, 36.70. Wow, that's, like, that's 100 points high. I don't see how it's going to do that now unless there's such an oversold condition, which the unbalanced volume, this blue line, is uh, nothing else is suggesting it, but the blue line says, very, very oversold. I don't use the word oversold in the stochastic or the MACD. I use it only on the unbalanced volume, and that is saying right now, on a purely technical level, there should be some kind of a relief balance. So let's go to the QQQ, and of course the Qs are being impacted by the SMHs because there are so many within the uh, NASDAQ 100. Down 3.61 at 262 right now. Took out the left side low of 267.10. Late September was it September the 20. What was it 29th or something? Let me just get there. Uh, September the 30th. So this is very important, and you can see the weekly chart has got this arch formation, trying to make a cup. Now the stochastics at 5% in the weekly chart. That is very very weak. It's going to take a lot to generate to move up into the 50% level. I'll be back in a moment. Let's just look at those e-minis because I think we, there is a big anxiousness out there uh, because the selling is, I mean, anyone who wanted to sell, they've been able to sell. Now it's a short player. And this move up now, leg B in the, in the is that a two-minute, yep, in the two-minute chart is suggesting what we were talking about before. Uh, we'll see if we can go a little higher. I'll be back in a moment. Dow is down 53. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Let me answer a couple of questions here, or the statements or questions uh, in the den. One is, yes, I remember I, I checked on APA, which is um, uh, APA course in energy stock. Uh, they, something happened there. And I had to renotate the whole thing, energy, oil, and gas connected to Apache. Uh, so, the, yes, there's a connection there. And the question was, have they – what was the question? Uh, oh, I just lost it. question was – there it is. Did Apache Oil change the name to their stock symbol, APA? Yeah, so they are connected to Apache, APA Core. So I don't know whether it's a holding company or whatever it is. But I know I had to redo, and they're trading at 40.40, uh, .40, down 77 cents right now, having made a peak A, B, C. Uh, is that a double top? C1, C2, but then I went on to a D. And the weekly chart has gone to a leg, a leg B. Uh, it is in play, but there's a little consolidation going on now, uh, coinciding with oil pulling back a little bit. And, the, and another question was Boeing. Could I show? Did I type that in the wrong place? Probably. Here we go. Boeing. Yes, I did. Boeing is trading at um, 130.69. There was some news yesterday which allowed Boeing to, to move up, and that kind of helped the Dow. That was a fake out for the Dow because it, it's, uh, it, although uh, it, it's weighted in such a way that it did impact the Dow. And down on dollar thirty five at 130.55, you're probably pulling back and uh, weighting the Dow a little bit to the downside. But, in fact, the Dow is holding way better yesterday and today than the S&P. The Dow is down only 48, and the S&P is down 33. So uh, Boeing, yes. Boeing made a peak D in the weekly chart, a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, and then a peak D. That should have been a down arrow upgraded to from a, just a, a plus sign to a, a down arrow. There it is. And now what we're looking at is there's a chance that over a period of maybe a month or two, there is a test of the low that was made back in June of 113.02. It's trading at 130.39. If, perchance, Boeing is able to fill that, that big gap down from closing on the 22nd of September at 138.29, uh, so at the, almost at the low of 132.29, and having a high of one. 
138 to 29, and having a high on the gap down day, the following day of 136.19, uh, if it's able to close that gap and trade into this ugly candle of the 20, of the 22nd of September, and perhaps uh, the high was 143, getting into the 139 to 140 area on a weekly basis at any point, that'll suggest that and that, I'm saying that regardless of whether it's in the interim it tests 113 or not, although if it holds above that, that'll be a good, a, a good break to the upside. That's really what's needed in Boeing to do anything to be able to show that there's some kind of upside action available. But at this particular point, it's very, very weak. Now, um, and that was that question there. So Boeing, in other words, has upside resistance, but if... In this period right now, this week, if it closes under 128.02, that was the low of three days ago, then the gap high of the 3rd of October, which is 127.15, that's going to be a key support level. Okay, just someone said, could you just have a quick look at your E-mini? Yeah, so it went to the peak B. It, it kind of did what we were talking about, but this pullback now, you see, as long as this pink... Nine-period exponential moving average uh, remains underneath the black 14-period moving average. The sell signal that started that was generated at uh, 36.20 uh, back uh, on the at 8.54 this morning, uh, that's in place. So 36.20, here yeah, we are at 35.90, having gone down to 38, almost 35.80 level. Uh, yeah. That says, remember, I like to look at things and say there are two outcomes here. One is that I like to look at the chances of a failure. I don't like to look at it, but I usually draw that in. There's the H pattern. And to break the H pattern, you want to see the pink nine-period moving average turn green. And all of a sudden, you can say, aha, we're already at a, at a peak. B, if there is a green candle, then you can see a target of the 3603.25 level of the 200-period exponential moving unfolding. So they, there are two patterns. One's the cup, one's the arch. And then you, you see that in every single chart you're looking at. So now let's go back to um, we were looking at uh, various... Uh, what I didn't do is I said the QQQ, but I wanted to show you the SMHs. The SMHs, which is a semiconductor, uh, this is the market vector semiconductor ETF, uh, is, is very weak, down 6 points. 15 at 176.15. Uh, to me, that is just negating any chance of a spectacular turnaround today just from an oversold condition. Yes, you could get a bounce to the upside. It's going to have to work hard, and you'll have to see the, the SMHs at least help, being helped, being dragged up so they're only down maybe three points or 2.5 uh, by mid... By, I, I wouldn't say mid-session. I'd say by after 1.30... And the down needs to be less than minus, <coughs> minus 30 at that particular time. So that's very important. And let's face it, you know, where the, um, the semis made a high in January at 318.69, and they are trading right now at 176, uh, not cut kind of off, but just a huge decline. And that's been a big drag on the general market. And they, lead, they, they are the oil um, of the 21st century. Uh, oil generated um, an expansion of economies around the world through just oil, petroleum products, et cetera, et cetera, uh, which really generated the huge uh, market moves over the 1900s into the early 2000s. And um, in about, I, I would put it this way, in the third, third part, in the... I would say in the final quarter of the 1900s, from about 1975, that's where semiconductors turned into oil. So almost everything needs semiconductors today. So um, we're looking at how important it is. And if you put it into perspective uh, right here, I'm going to show you something uh, that uh, I think is, is, is important just in terms of where we are in the market. We've spoken about this before. The VIX index trading up a little bit, trading up $1.20 at 33.65 in the daily is making this U-shaped pattern 
which says how you test the top of the U, in this case 34.88, the high of uh, uh, late September, around about the 30th or so, uh, how, you, how you deal with that is going to be very important because yesterday we went all the way to 30, what did I, 30, that was yesterday, yeah, 33.99, almost 34. And today it's holding very nicely to the upside. And we are still on the out, on the cusp, but we are still in the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It becomes a propellant zone. That's why I'm saying this arch formation in the Dow, is, it's so important today because this, this, this particular candle on the, the third day of the turnaround is where you go straight down to the left side low. So if there's some, some, some support today, that's going to be very important to say, whoops, save the day, at least in the very short term. So I'll be back, and uh, there's a lot of questions that have come in. Puzzle Chapman Tiger Conditions Hour. Dow is down 42, SP down 31. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30 day unconditional money back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, I just got this question since I'm working with one hand at this particular time. Uh, let me just say that PFIX, which is the Simplify Interest Rate, something or other, um, hedge. So this is trading at 69.77, down 32. Uh, within that context, what we're looking at here is the weekly chart has gone to a peak and has pulled back. Uh, that was in May. Then it retests in June with a slightly higher high, goes to an E, pulls back. And because we've got two um, peaks on this right side, I have to consider that this actually, I'm going to put this in. I might be wrong. Whew, this, is a, this is unfortunate. 
but this says that we're only in leg B. I could call it an alternate count, but just for the moment, with the MACD good, the stochastic strong at 92% of the weekly, I'm just going to be a little ahead instead of being conservative. I'll put it in just because you need to know that it's a G slash B because that pullback didn't take out the starting point. And I don't have enough uh, information in the monthly other than to say that the low that was made in the 30s, um, that looks like it started a leg B. Now, the, I looked at some of these last night. I saw them by accident. I was looking for new highs. Uh, I did a, a search on Investor Business Daily, and it came up with, uh, well, first of all, TBT. Look, it has the same thing. I'm calling this, yeah, in fact, it's very close. It looks very much the same. So the TBT is the Ultra Short Lehman 20-Year Treasury Bond ETF. It is trading in F slash B on the upside with the tacticals. Everything looking still very, very good. Down 26 cents today. It's 33.34. I looked at the TBF. I don't know if I notated it. No, I didn't. Which is almost what we're looking at right now when you asked about that PFIX. Um, I looked at the... BTLT. Is that BTLT? Gosh, I wish I'd write these things clearly. No. So what is that then? Uh, TMV was another one. TMV. And this is the direction 20-year treasury. You see, they all look the same. And in fact, I looked at these and I said, what on earth? They look like the yields. And then I figured out that, that they, they were uh, related to the bond yields. So this, this fits exactly. So I'm going to say this, that if you look at the TBT, and this has been that beautiful cup formation that was formed at 29.56 back in June, and then it pulls back. This is the ultra-short Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Then it broke underneath the 14-period moving average in the weekly. But look, the 9-period moving average, even though the MACD went down, the stochastic plummeted almost at 20%. That nine-period moving average held above the 14, and that was fantastic, and it's still fantastic. And the full says, watch out. The Fed, even though there could be a brief pause, the Fed is determined uh, to push. I mean, that's what it looks like right now on the weekly chart. The Fed is still determined to, make, to push the yields even higher. And I wanted to show this uh, earlier on. I'll do it now, TNX.X. Did I? I don't remember if I showed it. I know that I had it already to show that the TNX, the 10-year Treasury note yield, look at this. Um, I've, I drew this line in ages ago to say, don't worry if yields go higher. It's the trajectory that the Fed promulgates that is the issue. Look, we've been here, look, 2009, 2010, 2011. We've been hitting this uh, 30, let's call it 39, 3.9% range over and over and over again, and yet you had a spectacular bull market. Then we plummeted down to 3.98. Uh, 3.98? Is that, that, that can't be. Oh, yeah, 3.98 from 35. Um, that's, um, so that's 0.398 in the actual yield in the tenure. And now look where we are in leg D. We're above that. It's the trajectory. It is the... Um, it is the Fed talking about pushing rates higher, needing to do that, that is the issue. Now, um, here we go. Let me just show you this real quickly. So now we finally get into leg C in the cup formation of the E-mini. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. I want to see a, a hit of the 200-period moving average of 36.0. Now it's at 36.02 because it was slightly declining. And that would be very important. What I'd said is between uh, 10 and 50 and 11 and 10, we want to see trading above that level. And that'll say, good, a chunk of the downside, at least for this moment, has been done. So the question came in um, for subscribers, why, why are you looking at the long side at all? Isn't that kind of a fake out? And what I've done is we have raised the, the greatest amount of cash that we've had in ages for subscribers to my opening call. We are trying to be very selective. For instance, today we bought, and I got a question here, could I look at, oh, where did it go? Uh, I, maybe I have to do this right now. Yeah, could I look at the XLE? 
Well, the XLE has, is the energy, S&P Select Energy Spider Fund. It is down quite sharply. It made a, a, a really fabulous move from under 70 to 83, and now it's pulled back to 78 over the last uh, two sessions. And I think it's having a little digestive phase. What's really important as it's starting to show in the weekly chart is making higher highs and higher lows. Keep it as simple as possible. The, the um, jump weight up channel with the inside track propellant zone worked very well. I was a little late getting in there, and then I decided not to. Instead, I said to the subscribers, we're going to take uh, an oil gas service stock, and we're going to try to get into that. We're going to wait. Yesterday I had it as a buy, but it, it was way higher than that. I said, let's wait for the pullback. It got the pullback today, and now we're in it, and it's uh, already making just a little bit. But the day's young. We're not just over an hour into the session. So I don't want to get too carried away other than to say that the XLE could have a look at crude oil, and you'll see what I'm talking about. In the crude oil, these sharp moves that go up to the inside track repellent zone and then pull back have been very sharp. What's the difference now? The difference is that the stochastic is at 91% and flat. It is not fading. If it had dropped with this move over the last two days, down below 80%, I'd say, oh, oh be careful. Instead, for the very first time, we've got a flat stochastic, a very strong MACD, very strong 9 over the 14, way above uh, the 200-period moving average. So that says that the XLE is attempting to form the next base of support in the 80. What's the low today? 88.35. Uh, I would put it between 88 and 80. Let's call it 86. 80. Let's call it 87. Maybe just a tad lower to the 86.75 level, which is a 200 period moving average. Trying to find support. If at any stage in the next three to four sessions, in other words, going to Monday. Starts to trade above 90 in the 93 area, that is fantastic action for the daily because that says it's going to be leg C. Um, and the MACD is strong, and the stochastic will get even stronger than 91%. So I hope that helps you. If it closes at any point, because <clears throat> we're looking at extremely volatile markets, if it closes at any point below 85, that says, uh oh, be careful. At least for a very, very near term, not even short term, but near term, it's digesting the big gains, and it's got this lower lows and lower highs in the weekly chart. That's crude oil I'm talking about, and uh, we're going to have to watch that. But the XLE, an overall uh, participant in the energy sector, uh, a market gauge, actually, has done very well so far. Look at the monthly chart holding very nicely in the rectangle formation. I'll be back in a moment. Dow just went positive for a brief moment. I'll be back. The S&P is down 27. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. TSP down 17. This is kind of the move that I was wanting. This is purely technical. This is not based on emotion or anything like this. This is a series of hammering to the downside with the Chapman Wave uh, dreaded H pattern. To me, very important in this particular session in the Dow because this is the one that either accelerates quickly to the left side low or at least attempts to find some support. But you can have three in one day. This is, we've had one day early in the morning where the futures were down 250-something in the, in, the in, the, in the Dow, I think in nine or something in the S&P futures. And then there was a fabulous rally. That was part of the Chapman Wave trend gauge. High reading yesterday I suggested there should be a sharp rally in the S&P futures. And if it holds, it can help the general market. But by the time the market opened, it already started turning down. So this is important. And you can see what's so fascinating about chart patterns. It doesn't matter. You can have this um, multifaceted sector rotation that very, very often, when the tide is so strong, all the charts look the same. And look, here's natural gas, United States Natural Gas Fund, which this is the season of, of, of heating oil, heating uh, natural gas, uh, crude oil, whatever it is, being used a lot. And yet, UNG is about to test the left side low of, of uh, October the 3rd, 21.17. And what is UNG? United States Natural Gas Fund. So it pops up over the 200 period moving average, which was support that became resistance. Now it's a magnet. It went to a peak A, and now it's failing. And today's this acceleration to the downside. By the by, the end of the day, you want to see natural gas not take out this left side low because that'll be very negative. Actually, maybe for for winter, it's saying at this point, don't worry about winter because we're still having summertime natural gas prices. Uh, by them coming down very nicely. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a low of 21.70 on the 3rd of October. It must hold. We're at, the low today is 22.10. We're almost there right now. This is going to be very important. If you're looking at the weekly chart, these big rectangle, these patterns tell you you're in a range. And it just says, don't be surprised if even if after a pullback in a month and a half, you're looking at natural gas up in the 27 to 30 area because that's what happens in these big rectangles. But it is a peak D in the monthly chart, and the peak D is where you can see the sharpest decline. This isn't the sharpest. It's one of the sharpest. Peak C was pretty big, and then the very next bar soared to the upside for the new recovery high at about in the 34s, and now we're looking at a pretty steep pullback. So that's the United States Natural Gas Fund. So, uh, so within the context of... The big picture, the big picture says the Fed wants high yield. The Fed wants high yields because that's their way of bringing, installing the economy and basically bringing prices down. Well, if you're stalling the economy, what happens to stuff that is in maybe the HGX, which is what? That is the 
uh, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, which made a, made a peak high, a double top high in about the 420 area. Uh, 538 was the high way back in uh, 2021. Pull back very sharply to the 330s, bounced up to the 420s, and now it's come down to the low of October, no, September the 29th, no, 27th at 342.76. Very strong gap up. Island reversal to the upside, now an island reversal to the downside. But it seems to me, based on just the visuals of the weekly chart, that the technicals on the right side are quite a bit stronger than the technicals on the left. And that says to me, there's a chance that we're getting really close to some kind of a pullback in yields so that the TLT can finally have a bit of a, ba- a ra- rally. And that could help the um, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index bounce a little bit. But the overall pattern of the weekly chart says this H pattern looks like a dreaded H could become an M, a lowercase M rather than the arch of the H and have another move to the upside, but it's stuck in a range. Okay, next question I had was um, not a question, but a statement. I discussed this yesterday. I don't want to take time now. I will do a little bit of a study, and I'll do that at some point over the next week on uh, advanced micro devices having spectacular moves from the single digits to the double, sometimes even triple digits, and then just coming back huge. Sometimes it coincides exactly with market moves, and sometimes it's just completely independent because they did the wrong thing, and they're paying the penalty. Now, 164.46 was the high in November. It's trading at 57. I mean, 110 points down from that high. That is, that is, it's in the Chapman Wave Inside Track right now, weekly chart in a trough, a leg G to the downside. The, I should actually put G slash C because that's the way G's often work. I always I always look at it very closely, and so many times it makes a G slash C, and then it has another move, and then it goes to a D, and then that's the big turn, both on the upside and the downside. So I'm watching this very closely because Ross Micro Devices was basically a leader for a while. I mean, if you look at a, a laggard like Intel, where did I type that? Oh, I typed it right there. I shouldn't type it right there. If you look at Intel... Uh, Intel uh, had a double top, but that was from 2020 to 2021 uh, in the 69, almost 70 area, trading now at 24.99. You know, the, so the answer to the question is, Bowser uh, keep talking about an oversold bounce coming the, the past week. Actually, intraday we've had these, and then it just they failed. I'm saying that there's a condition that I call, I call a technical oversold condition. It means that you haven't, you're, you're not in the sequence that says you want the VIX to scream to the 40s or something, and that's the final, the, the big low. No, this is a series of low lows and lower highs. The only way you can get these very big moves like we had in April, like we had going to the August high, etc., is when you, 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 man, you on a, on a near-term basis, remember the core is the sell signal and via the DOG, the short position we've had in the Dow in this last move since August, I don't want to change that at all. But in order to understand whether or not you can get a move that says it's a big enough move that you can now buy something like the TQQQ, three times long the Qs, but you don't have to get too excited about it. You just take a small amount of money with a very big leverage and you see, if you've got your timing right, you make a fabulous percentage, and then you get out. So that's what I'm talking about. But the overall thing, and I'll do this again, I, I did it uh, yesterday and I did it the other day, was to say that the S&P monthly chart has crossed negative. The nine period is now under the 14 period moving average for the first time in not months, not years, but in... Uh, I think they were, yep, in decades. Since the crossover, this is unbelievable. Since the crossover right there in March of 2010, the nine period moving average monthly chart has gone through the Obama years, through the Trump years, 
into the Biden years and for the very first time has crossed negative. And in fact, we are underneath where Biden got. Look, there it is, January 2021. We are underneath where Biden took over as the president. So it says this is a leg seat to the downside, making lower lows. You'll have to monitor this very closely. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Dow 51, s and down 21. Big time. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I got the addition though, and I have to agree with the statement that was made that this always occur very close to where we're getting some kind of a market turn. And we will be looking at things like the SQQQ or the TQQQ or the SOXS, that's the uh, S&P short, or the SOXL. Oh, no. Yes, L, which is the long side. <clears throat> so what I drew here is this uh, pattern that says we are in a buy mode in the E-mini two-minute chart. I am just sticking with this particular two-minute for now. Um, but... It's gotten to, it's walking the nine period moving average, but it's beginning to stall. It should have had speed. It should have used that uh, momentum to the upside to the peak C that was made at about 36.09, and now it needs to push even further to the upside. So, with that said, it says that I said by 10, uh, 10.50 to 11.10, we should be getting to the 36.09, 36. We already got there, but I said also that if it works, we should start to head because we're now uh, we're looking at the left side high that was made back at uh, 924 this morning in the 5616 area.
So we need to see that this chef wave inside track, also inside wedge target resistance line right here of 3611 uh, is taken out, and finally we can see a move that goes all the way to the 3615s. Now we're at 3607. I like what I'm seeing here, and as I said, it's just a purely technical oversold condition, but these are the conditions that tell you that they could be follow-up, and you can play the follow-up, which is what we've been doing for subscribers to my opening call, either on buying single-digit stocks that hopefully can give nice percentage gains or that are in the sector that I like, or we're going for something that is in the sector that's working, and we can go three times long in a small position, make some money, take it off, and keep building the kitty for the big move to the downside sometime, sometime in the future. So with that said, stay tuned. I'll be back with some of the latest today. Stay tuned. Because Steve Roach should be great programming coming up all day, of course. And I'll be back with Tom. Tom O'Brien wraps it up at Feature 4. And Tommy O'Brien 